Okay, and we are recording now. Awesome. All right. Welcome. We are on session 12, I think. Uh, or is it... It's 12 or 13. We'll know by what the header of the title of this is when we dump it on YouTube. Of the Dead Sea God. Carissa, continue with, uh, as you were discussing, where we left off last time. All right. It's been a hot minute, but you guys are all on a boat. You're going down the river, and you're trying to figure out who was the mole that got the micro griffins stolen. For plot reasons, you guys think that it is somebody who is on this boat, and you all have been going about trying to find out who it was. Um, you've talked to most of the members of the boat. And there's a handful you still haven't had a chance to largely interact with. Um, last session, we had Koki and Farida continuing with a gambling with the lovely Hazel, who is a starlet, and her girlfriend, Flu. Um, we had... <laughs> Ray, what were you doing? Uh, I was... You, you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, I was making sure because I have I have mine muted and I can't hear myself through Kelsey's, so I was just making sure. Mm. Yes, you are, you are being heard. Your little green icon is flashing brightly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, to my memory, was following... Um, people and listening in on their conversations to try to get some intel. That is correct. Specifically, the uh, first uh, the first instance you hung out with, uh, you had some tea with uh, Diathin, well, the representative from the Shalaran Library. I'm sorry, Carissa. I am dreadful at pronunciations and always will be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Diathin. Mov Movineth? Mov Movineth. Movineth. You got it. Yeah. Um, and secondly, you were um, listening in on the Gnomish representative from the... I forget what her faction of the church is. My brain is She glitching. is part of the Keepers. Thank you. She is part of the Keepers, and you were listening in on her, and you heard some juicy, uh, potentially juicy tidbits, or at least by, based off of Ray's reaction, it seemed like he was very interested in some potential hidden underground tunnels at the uh, Architecture Guild's uh, main hall. Oh, uh -huh. All right. Uh, as you were, Carissa. Uh, uh, Shava had been getting a dinner with Bellis and asking him questions about her personal mission uh, and kind of in passing saw a Eric Rokra uh, Eric Rokra the gender neutral term for that Purse? a gentleman in his person? Spouse? Or are you trying to think of spouse or what? I don't know what the. I was what... trying to think of like the gender neutral term for gentleman. Dude, I had that same question. I was trying to figure <laughs> out what the oh, like literally today for a completely unrelated reason. I was trying to figure Just out what the gender gender neutral term for madam or sir was, and I couldn't think of one. I don't know if they exist. I feel like they're. I shit. asked that at a conference that I went to because I really wanted to know. And they said, one, they did not know of them as they were. And two, they were trying to get rid of the whole ma'am and sir thing because it's rooted in racist history. I, I'm, All right, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, I, that is the first thing. I've, I, every time I think about it, I think of like Victorian era and like just servants, not necessarily racist servant things. Classist, yes. Racist questionable. Yeah. I will I consult only think of strict parents with kids. Yes. Mm. 
I guess the roots of the word themselves were based off of what they wanted, like the slaves to call their white owners. Ew. So ma'am came from madame. So instead of making it a French thing, they wanted to make it like a subservient thing and switched it to ma'am. Oh, so instead of my lady and madam, Mm -hmm. what we had in Mm -hmm. European times, they switched it to ma'am and that's where the racism comes in. Okay. That makes sense. That's fair. So we're going back to my lady. (laughs) Still don't help with sir or madame. If I say madame. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I think you're cussing at him. Anyways, back to the game. Right. Jean Claude, Mr. Madame. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, back to the thing. Whatever the gender neutral equivalent of gentle, gentle person, I think somebody might have even said, and I missed sure. it. Sure. Um, anyways, I a lovely Eric Croker. I said gentle burb as a joke. Oh, no. I like that. The gentle burb and uh, their husband were in the same room and you could probably hear them talking a little bit but the night is drawing to a close um and benny's mic has gone mute with a little bit of a crackle and everybody knows that the auction is up and nearing so let's start off with koki and farida Oh, putting pizza in the oven. Hold it. Go ahead. What, what, <laughs> oh, that's right. Because we're at the table. I'm serving drinks. She um, is playing games. Yes. Okay. All I right. Remember now. So the double or nothing competition has completed. Uh, Farida, you kicked ass and took names. Congratulations. Um, Koki, oh, right. you have endeared yourself into the heart of Hazel, who is. Got taste. <laughs> um, if, and unfortunately, maybe a little bit too stiff of a taste. The. I'm sorry, guys. No worries. Three. What do you need? What is the question? Anything you need to know, just ask me and I will throw it at you as needed. Lindsay, can you just start the scene for me? I can absolutely attempt to start the scene here for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you have all just, uh, you two in the dining hall, um, I'm going to say there's, uh, Wiz, who was the bartender for the main area, is coming out, and, uh, seeing that there are still some patrons here who are, uh, supposed to head over to where they need to be. Oh, thank you, I didn't know whereabouts he was. Uh, one, he was looking for Koki, and then he's coming in, he's like, um, I'm trying to remember how Wiz talked (laughs) Oh, it's like, hey everyone. A little bit hippie-ish. Yeah, all right, fair enough. I was I was about to channel somebody, so I'm not sure if this was gonna be right or not. But I'll go. It's like, oh, mother. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Sorry. gentle uh, guests, I have been come I've come in to uh, borrow my associate here to prepare drinks for the auction that is about to be uh, starting downstairs. If you will make your way down there, your seats are ready for you. And if there's anything you want us to bring down for you, let us know. Otherwise, we'll have some of our specials already up on a tray for us. And then he's going to go up to, um, what you calls it, um, Quoki here. Um, oh, shoot, I forgot the, the one thing you were trying to add in there. Um, so just before that, Hazel, having been... Uh, very pleased with you sort of letting her uh, having a rather pleasant chat with her, which was mostly her talking and you listening. Um, What she calls it. Uh, She actually gives you a spare ticket and flyer to her upcoming show on whatever main island I think we had it listed as. I forget where. But... Mm -hmm. Uh, it is not here, is all I'm saying. You would physically have to travel there, wherever it is. Um, and uh, wishes you well as she see- as the Wiz comes over to do the announcement. And she and Plu uh, make their way down. And then Wiz pretty much comes over to Koki. It's like, hey, so, yeah, like I said, you were doing real well in here. I saw you mingling with the uh, high rollers and such. 
And I, I think I want you to be the one to man the, the drink station down in the auction hall. Is that okay with you? I am obviously up yeah, here to support your needs. Sorry, repeat sorry. that one more time. No, I was just going to say yes, and then um, you kept talking. So sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, that was my bad. Um, but yes, no, I... I... <clears throat> but yeah, no, you did not. You are good. All right, cool. So we can go and get that set up. Um, Faraday, do you make your way down following behind uh, Hazel and Plue? Are you going to go and try and find your associate who also has the ticket, Ray? Or what are you up to? That's a good question. I'm following down my gambling buddies. Okay. Um, fortunately, I'm checking where the stairs are. There are stairs there. Um because the other stairs are that one. All right, so they are, so then your stairs you're going to head to, I think. Are they these big ones on the side, probably, where they would head? Yeah, probably these yeah, big ones on the side. Yeah, they're not auto-linked, so we'll yeah, probably no just... Uh, we'll just drag them over. So. Dink. Oh. You just went black, it's okay. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so you get them situated, moved over and things. Um, I will go over to Ray. Um now that Wiz has confirmed with his associate, he is going to uh, basically come back in here and similarly alert the rest of the dining or the re he's 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 kind of been informed who the VIP are, so he's going up, he's talking to him quietly because there are like other guests hanging around, and you start to see all of them filtering to where it would still be these these big uh, stairs at the this is the back of the mm -hmm. boat. No, actually, this mm -hmm. is the front of the boat, because that's where the steering is. I forget how boats work. <laughs> yes, that is the front of the boat, technically. Yes. To the uh, right. The stairs to the front. And uh, he does likewise come up to you, Ray. <clears throat> as everyone else. And he's like, uh, Hello, sir. I have just been coming around letting all the VIPs know that the auction is about to begin. We're going to have a drink station down there. If there's anything you need, let us know. The You can get to the lower decks by taking the stairs at the front of the boat and going all the way down. Ray, what do you do? I kind of look over my shoulder for a second to make sure he's talking to me. <laughs> uh, wow, okay. Uh, thank you. Of course, uh, I'll get I'll get right on that. Of course, it is of all the VIP. Of course, it is. Um, I was just what we were all asked to take care of the VIPs. Thank you and have a good day. We'll see you later on. And then he's likewise gonna come in and uh, do the same thing. I'm not gonna move him around all the way, but um, to the other ones. But um. He's going to talk to the librarian and then our couple over here. And then they're going to get up and head over. And then Bellas uh, is looking at things or looking around and seeing what's going on. He's going to turn to Shava. Sorry, brain glitch there for a second. Um, well, I guess it is about that time. Shall we head down to the auction? As he like stands up and offers you his hand. I stand up, gracefully put my hand into his, and say, yes, we shall. All right. All right. So then all of you, and Ray, um, as everyone is filtering out, are you following them, or what are you up to? I'm going to follow. All right. Okay. And... Uh, with that, uh, you are all down here in the auction area, and, <clears throat> or at least, like, most of you and things, uh, would they need to, uh, Chris, at this point, would you want them to, like, roll perception to note who is or isn't here, or nah, or what? Nah, I'll just describe it. All right, carry on. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to ask if if you were if I was done with my thing, if you wanted to take over, or what the deal was. It's okay. I'll do um I'll do the description until we get through the first round of the auction. Of course, carry on. 
All right. So as you all start uh, getting your way into the bowels of the boat, you come across a large room. There seems to be rather comfortable, but no backed chairs, uh, kind of just strewn about in a somewhat semicircle, facing the back wall. You know from the size of the boat, if you guys have been walking around, there's probably more behind it. And if you look at the doors close enough, you'll notice that they're more of a folding door kind of scenario than true doors. And you feel like this entire area could probably open up even larger. But as it stands right now, this is the size that it is. Towards the back of the room, by the stairs, there are several guards. Um, and a couple of them, even without looking, you can see Barrett's little pens on them. Um, most of everybody is down here. There are two people missing of note. Axton, the person who actually owns the boat, is not down here yet. Nor is Barrett. Barrett is, in fact, missing. Um, Nabora, his lawyer, and the wife of Bellis is standing at the front off to the side of what you probably is going to end up being the auctioneer in the center of several pieces of paper and such kind of standing off to the side peering over everybody with a little bit of an imperious look um and generally just taking in the views everybody kind of settles into specific seats and you hear the auctioneer from the front go auction starts in 10 minutes Please feel free to move around, get comfortable, mingle, get your drinks. We do ask that if you talk during the auction that you keep it to a whisper. That way we, we can clearly hear anyone speaking during the auction. Thank Question. you. Question. Do they have paddles? They can have paddles. Good. Sorry, who's everybody? That is everybody. Does anybody want to do anything in the next few minutes before the auction starts? So, question. Am I supposed to be seeing this auction room? Yes. Do you not? Okay, because I'm, I'm still seeing where I was serving drinks. Okay. And I, um... I tried moving, and I get a whole bunch of red pop-ups. Mm, great. Cool. Is everyone else able to see the room? Yep. Aside from the obvious. <laughs> Uh, no? Am I supposed to see the room? Yeah. yeah no, it's still black. Back here. <laughs> it oh. hasn't... I can see that. Okay. Well, that's a couple people. Let me try Farida again. Oh! Now I can! Hello. Day, has that worked? No, I'm still stuck where I was. All right. Let's see. Why is it, it maybe that I can my, never... Farida is still there with me, too, so... That should, should be, be a thing. You are apparently watching, like, looking at an older yeah, screen go ahead and um, refresh. refresh. Yeah. Yeah. Because you should be in a different room now. All right. In, well, that's uh, what's going on. Oh, uh, I was going to explain the auctioning, unless you wanted to explain the auctioning. No, I was going to ask uh, Ray if she wanted to do anything before, or he if he wanted to do anything before the uh, auction, or if he wanted to sit in a specific spot. Is there uh, anything okay. that's like catching? I think uh, I heard you. Uh, I heard, is there anything catching my eye? I'm not sure if you said anything after that. I think we both start talking at the same time. <laughs> and I'm then sorry. we both stop at the same time. I just want to know if anything is catching my eye. You are coming in and out something fierce again. I'm so sorry. Nar. Um, I think the first thing I said was, I think we both started talking and then we stopped talking at the same time. <laughs> and then the second thing was, um, is there anything that, like catches my eye that I would notice? Well, give me a perception roll.
Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, you do. Okay. So, um, your thiefiness has come in handy to you. You notice that the guards, since they're all against the back of the room, they do seem to be mostly focused on the doors, which is technically towards the front of the boat, but behind the stairs you just came down. That is the most blaringly obvious thing. You do also notice that a couple of these guards are hiding their pins. Um, every guard actually has a pen from Barrett on them. There is no normal boat guards down here. Um, I'm for sure going to keep my eye on Yes. Um, there's a couple faces down here that you know that your party has not seen yet, and you can tell that everybody is down here. Faces that you haven't seen yet is quiet, uh, and I'll put a little effect on them so you can see who I'm talking about. They'll start glowing a little bit. Quiet, the unknown uh, person that is you did not have a lot of information on, as well as the lovely Baroness of Lumber and their guard slash hand servant. Um, you can confirm that there are people moving behind the doors behind the auctioneer. So remember how I said those are probably collapsing doors? Your very sensitive kitty ears pick up noises coming from beyond that that are muffled more than the room should allow for. I am definitely going to keep my eye on... Um the people who are wearing the Barrett okay. um, things, pins. Yes. I know the word. I just can't remember it. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to try to make myself as inconspicuous as possible, given that I'm like calico to bags. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead and pick a seat. And I walk around the room and offer drinks to people and see what they would like. All right. Who do you want to walk up to first? Oh, shoot. You got choices. I do have choices. <clears throat> Belle, you stole my seat. Mm, let's, uh, let's do like a loop of the room and I'll go to the right. So, I mean, I'll start with, I think that's fair to just to, you know, keep up appearances. Mm, and then I'll okay. loop around. So can I just walk myself? Oh, what, am I limited yeah. to my 30 movement or whatever? Nah, you can just go ahead okay. and move your person however you want. Farida, why are you dead? Guys, I'm dead. Someone help me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you die for real? <laughs> that is, that's the quote of the entire campaign. <laughs> why am I dead? <laughs> Faraday, why are you dead? I'm so sorry. Ooh, someone's up with me. Hello, stranger. Hello. Well, I'm yeah. not a stranger. Oh, yeah. What I was do like, you wait mean? a minute. What are you talking to me? What do you mean we're not strangers? No, you are. I'm sorry. I was talking to somebody else in my brain. Oh, uh, right, of course. Can I get... What the... What is a drink? I know what's there was a... a what's a weird <laughs> drink? <laughs> and I can't what remember you... what the other special drink is. And then can I have a purple nurple? That sounds delicious. <laughs> the, purple, the purple nurple is my specialty, so oh, I think fantastic. you will be pleased. I'm so excited. Okay, I will be, be I will be back with that shortly. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Would you could I interest you in a drink tonight? Uh, so is your approach Hazel and, uh, Plu, they both seem exceptionally pleased to see you down there, and they go, yes, yes, please. Um, Plu kind of, like, perks up and requests something, um, that is probably just pretty common for Tabaxi. It's pretty much the Tabaxi version of a gin and tonics, and, um, uh, Hazel orders what is the equivalent of a whiskey. Simple drinks. You guys are taking it easy on me. Thank you. I was like, and that, whatever the name of the tabaxi gin and tonic is, is <laughs> a good one. And oh. one after my own heart. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. 
we'll make sure uh, you're well taken care of tonight and I'll add it to your inventory. Uh, Plu slips you to silver and thanks you for keeping her spouse entertained earlier. Why, thank you. That's the power of a good bartender, baby. I know, man. I'm a boat rich on this boat. <laughs> you just quit adventuring and just start being a bartender. <laughs> there you go. Problem solved. The, the dancing. I can say from experience, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you approach, um, Hazel. Not sorry. That is not Hazel. Hazelin and. Therithalak. I haven't actually had to say her name a lot because you guys haven't interacted with them. Um, you did get a small smidgen of information very early on from Benny about these two. And they were talking alone privately in their room, but nobody's actually interacted with them much. Therithalak looks like a very um, snooty Hold on one second. Oh, geez, what happened? Oh, She's talking to me. Don't mind her. I had a question. No, 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 I was trying to zoom in and out, and the screen <laughs> disappeared, so. Oh. Are you okay? What did she, yeah, what did she say their names were? I was trying to look <clears throat> to see if their names would pop up if I hovered, but it's not oh, happening. they're not. Hold on. I thought I changed all of that. Why didn't it keep? Did literally none of these keep? Okay, some of them did. All right. Um, I posted this in the chat while you guys are listening to other people play. If you double click on any of the icons, you will now be able to open up their biography. Yes. Turtolek. Turtolek. So. So Turtolek and Hazelin. So Tertholik kind of has the appearance of someone who is very uh, prim, very proper. She has a very long, willowy body. Um, Hazelin is standing behind her uh, in a exceptionally modest, but also very functional. Seems to have a light bit of armor actually underneath her fancy clothes. And an almost military-esque kind of stance with her like hands kind of like behind her back. Um, she seems to be taking it very seriously. She's not overly aggressive as you approach them, but she definitely takes note of you. Um, Tethelak tips her head and goes, I'm actually going to pass today as I will likely be signing contracts. I don't want to be inebriated, but after you do your rounds, if you could bring me some water, I would greatly appreciate it. Of course. And I must say that we have a couple of non-alcoholic mocktails if you were one ever tickles your fancy tonight. Oh, that does sound lovely. If you could bring me one of those at some point, I would greatly appreciate it. Sure. And you, my lady? Uh, Hazelin kind of gives you an <laughs> awkward smile and goes, um, I will be abstaining for the night from anything. Thank you so much. All right. All right, that's what. One, two, three, four, five. Let's let's do one more for this guy here. Coralus. Hello. I don't want to assume your gender, sir. By believe... the picture. Coralus goes by they them. They them. All right. Well, I don't know what the they them equivalent of. You can call. You can call Coralus, sir. They're. they're... Technically, they he, but would I, I know their name that much the detail? Boat? Yes, you would. Oh, okay. Well, then, hello, Coralus. I'm gonna be a good bartender. Remember everybody's name. Oh yeah, because you yeah. actually served him. He was uh gambling with Faraday and them earlier. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, would you like anything to drink, good sir? On my first pass through the the, the ballroom, he uh seems a little caught off guard, and they look up at you and go, "I um." Yes, just a glass of wine would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. And I don't know if it's too late, but can I um, 
try to find out if I heard anything that I should have possibly have heard while I did that first pass. Let's see. Okay. Actually, yes. Let me give you. Give me perception roll. Perception. Let's go. No? Okay. I'll have to click the dice. Okay. Pick yeah. it. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. God damn, guys. <clears throat> Everyone All sees right. so much. This, you guys <laughs> are, like, this... on it. Oh, wait, and if this is a hearing, she actually has advantage. <laughs> well, I don't think she needed it. That is accurate. <laughs> I just wanted to say, hypothetically, if because if, 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 I, I, I have to constantly remember what stuff our parties get so I don't accidentally have be, people be playing a freaking barbarian for however many sessions and forget <laughs> to tell them what rage is. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. please continue. All right. So as you're walking around, uh, before you got to uh, Terlac and Haslin, they were actually talking about um, in very, very quiet voices, um, concern about one of the members on the boat perhaps winning the auction that they did not want them to win, as well as not realizing that there would be people at the auction from outside of the aisles. Um, the more interesting thing is Ms. Uh, we're just going to call her Tool over here. Tool is uh, the orcish doctor who most of you have not really seen much of or heard much of. They were arguing. Uh, she was arguing with her partner in her room when Benny walked by earlier. She came down and while she was coming down, while you were doing your rounds, uh, she actually did not sit next to her spouse. She and he are not sitting next to each other. And you heard some very, very heated words between the two. Um, Tool pretty much made it very obvious that they were not happy that they were still here and that they wanted to leave. And their partner, uh, Thalinar, pretty much told her you're being ridiculous we're being on a boat and i don't know why you are endangering us by being so inhospitable um you also caught a glimpse while you were walking around do that 20 i'm going to give you something i normally wouldn't of this guard all the way in the back going into the back room without saying anything is that your cursor moving around that I'm supposed to be following? Oh, there it is. Okay, hello. And then the guy went behind the doors. Okay. Are the little purple things the doors? The, Are the purple and yellow? Purple and yellow. Those are These chairs. Oh, Those are chairs. Okay. These are chairs. The doors are this wall right here. Oh, okay. uh, Behind the stairs. I had to scroll. I would very much suggest zooming out for this one, yeah. Well, I'm trying. Oh, now it's working. I was like, I've been trying for the last like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And so then, sorry because I wasn't sure where you were pointing. Where's Tool and her not so happy spouse? She's actually the one now sitting directly in front of your cart. Okay. And Thalinar is all the way at the bottom. Oh. Also, I'm really not happy. No. They're <laughs> not sitting next to each other. Yeah. I was thinking, like, same table but across from each other or something. Mm -hmm. You're like, um, we're all the way across the room. No, they are they are angry, angry with each other. The boat of nobody is happy. Welcome. <laughs> yes, girl. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Quit taking my seat. Cat? Yes. <laughs> And then I touch her, and she's like, ah! All right. Well, then, Farida, was there anything you wanted to do before we got started? I'll go back to my cart and make drinks while she thinks. Sounds good. Who, who were my gambling buddies? There's actually right in front of you. These two. And you were very briefly uh, playing with Tool, actually. But I think she left early once you started throwing large money down on the table. 
That is right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yep. And you, of course, were also playing with the noble uh, Colrus. Assuming that's the one I'm perfectly remembering, right? Yes, yes. Yep. Hey, I gained money from gambling. The big money was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I really was using this whole time to think of what I wanted to say to them, because I want to become their friends, and I really don't have anything. Can you throw me a bone, because my brain doesn't work, and tell me what I would normally say to them? Hmm. So you're a bard. Not even necessarily what a bard would do. What Katie would do. I can't function. <laughs> would you sing him a song? <laughs> song of your people. Are you? I want to play a song. Do I have songs? I mean, yeah, I'm a bard. I definitely have songs. Okay. That, that was a dumb question. You know what else I have? Bardic inspiration, which is a cool <laughs> thing I learned. <laughs> Oh my. Oh. Um, so I've noticed when you play, you do tend to like being cheeky with other people. Um, I think now might be a good point to. I think it was 10 gold, was it, Lindsay? Uh, 20. 20 gold that uh, flew one over you? They both. So they kept tying for like three to five times in a row. I'd have to go back and watch the recording. But they kept tying, and it was getting to the point where uh, Faraday literally could not bet again. And so Plu was like, look, this is insane. Let's just split the pot. So they each got 20. So I would walk up... Sorry, continue. No, I was just going to say, because it kept doing double or nothing, I think, is what is how it kept rolling, and then that's why it went over. Yeah, and I ended up going all in, I remember. Yep. <laughs> like, three times. Um, so I would personally just walk up and make some sort of comment about uh, trying to outbid them that 20 gold. Did I ever ask them what they were trying to get? Mm. That would actually also be a pretty good icebreaker. All right, so I would walk up to... I think I was becoming closer friends with the cat. I yes. believe so. Oh, I'm on top of him. This is not sexual. It was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Okay, no, you two are fighting. <laughs> break the ice, too. This game is taking a turn. Stop <laughs> fighting. Okay, there. So I walk up and sit in his lap directly in front of his... <laughs> Little did you know, they're both into it. <laughs> They're like, no, oh, they're we didn't think we'd be getting this on the boat. <laughs> they were like, well, we were going to buy ourselves something, but maybe we'll buy you something instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, So I'll go up to him and I'll be like, hey, so what are you trying for so that I can outbid you on it? Plu kind of laughs at you and she goes, um, yeah, I guess we didn't really talk about that. Well, uh, I am here to mostly gamble but I did have my eye on something and, he ca- and uh, she kind of looks at Hazel out of the corner of her eyes and Hazel kind of gives her like a playful roll of her eyes back um, bemused not really irritated she goes I'm here for some of the jewelry I thought it would make a wonderful gift um, it's not often you have the option to buy something that isn't accessible to everyone else after all um and then Hazel over here is hoping to get her hands on that dress. And Hazel kind of nods emphatically. She, and Plue goes, I'm not quite sure what she's planning on doing with it, but I've gotten enough glares to know to stop asking. <laughs> and Hazel goes from nodding emphatically to kind of giving her the side eye. What appears we're not going after the same things then, because I am already decked out in jewelry, and I point to my garish <laughs> leaf necklace, which is which is absolutely gorgeous. I know we both agree. Um, I'm trying to get the boat, and I'm sure I have enough gold to do so since I took all of yours earlier. <laughs> Blue kind of laughs and goes, "Are you sure you have enough gold if you ran out for a boat?" <laughs> See, what you're missing is... Is? I want to say that I have more gold, but I'm actually a terrible liar. 
So oh. I'm just betting on no one else is going to want the boat. Uh, you could. Uh, I mean, you might be a terrible liar, but perhaps Faraday is not. You could roll a uh, deception if you wanted to try and run that. See, Faraday is a good liar, but do I have to deceive that I'm bad at lying? That wasn't what I meant to do. Oh, you no, were si- no. I thought no, no, no. I thought you were saying that out of character. My apologies. I didn't realize that's what you were saying to them as Faraday. My bad. My bad. Sorry. No, nah, that that was my quote. Uh, but actually, then I realized I that's technically that. no, that's <laughs> technically a lie because she is plus four to deception, but it wasn't meant to be. No, 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 no. I, I misunderstood. You are, you are fine. You're okay, fine. So you're, We're not going to yeah. make you roll to lie about lying. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I ask him for money? Would he like to buy me the book? Uh, Plu? <laughs> want to also... ask Plu to buy you a boat? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna like. What if we play one more game? Uh, she is. Don't forget to tilt her chin up when you ask her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like get really close to her face. I'm like caressing the side of her face. <laughs> and we're back in Plue's lap again. <laughs> um, Plue says, "Well, I would love to see that. Why don't you pull up a chair beside us and?" Tell me about why you want to buy a boat. Is this a real question that Faraday can answer? Yeah. I want to be the captain of a boat. And you see, the issue with that is first that I have no crew, but second that I have no <laughs> boat. And I feel like I can get the crew. You know, I that's no issue, but I need the boat in order to have the crew to get on the boat. Uh, this is are... literally the plot of One Piece. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. I have never consumed any One Piece media, so that's hilarious. Well, I think that's, that's like, like the one of the first, first things he does. He's like, I need a boat so I can get a crew. Yeah. And then he still starts growing the crew before he gets the boat. Just saying, but neither here nor there. <laughs> no one well, said Luffy was smart. Literally, no one. Is li- literally, no one. I, no I one said never Faraday claimed was smart. that. She's... I'm just. I'm just stating what happened in the show. Her anyway. dumb stat is intelligence. Oh, poor Faraday. Ariel. Oh, it's beyond a dumb stat. It's it's probably yeah, yeah. It's no. the easy dumb stat if you're not a caster. Um That's what anyway. Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh she goes, "Ah, I see. The speedrun version. Gotcha." <laughs> um that's definitely a way to do it. And you definitely have the charisma to do it. And from beside Plu, you hear uh, her girlfriend go, I mean, obviously she has the charisma to do it. She's pulling off that necklace. <laughs> you like oh. it? Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> she kind of looks at you and you watch as her frosty <laughs> exterior kind of melts a little bit and she kind of gives you a small smile. And she goes, it does look good against your skin tone. Um, but that seems to be the only compliment she's giving it at this Very point. I'm gonna leave here with two bitches mm-hmm. on her arms, like mm-hmm. Tatum. Hey, um, I I think canonically I'm in a bad outfit, so if I'm getting any compliment, <laughs> I'm taking it. So uh, as you um, are talking to them, they actually separate and have you sit between them. <laughs> fantastic and they continue asking you questions quietly about your life goals about being a captain of your own ship with amused expressions great all right shava you are down here uh sitting next to bellis uh who is kind of looking at doesn't really seem concerned that uh his wife is not sitting with you guys. Uh, apparently, this was all part of the plan. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask him before the auction? Before I do that, <clears throat> can I roll and see if I heard that conversation going on? Yeah, sure. Give me perception. Okay. okay. Uh, actually, hold on. I can request it from you. One sec. Okay. Da, 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 da. I still got to learn how to do that button. I will show you after game. Indeed. God damn, God guys. Damn. 
man. All it right. It's been uh, so long. Y'all have like your your characters in the game have saved, have stored all of their energy. <laughs> They're like, we're going out. We're doing this boat shit with a bang. Um, you do. You actually do hear a decent amount of it. The auction hasn't started, so they were not trying to be quiet. And Farida was uh, definitely laying the charisma on strongly. So you recognized her voice pretty clearly from across the room. I put my hand in my head in my hand and just shake my head for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Bella uh, kind of watches you with an amused grin. I'm not sure about my companions sometimes. Oh, they do seem amusing, if anything else. Uh, they are that. They are that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> my dear, would you like a drink before we get started? Um, maybe just some fruit juice. Some fruit juice? All right. I will be back shortly before we get started. Um, I believe, yes, yes, and I will be right back. And so he actually goes over to the bar cart, and Nabora walks up to you and goes, all right, is everything going okay? Is he making sure you're taken care of? Oh, yes, he's very kind. I, I nudge her, lucky woman. <laughs> he, he's a bit eccentric, but yes, he is very kind. Um <laughs> And she looks kind of fond, but also kind of embarrassed. She goes, anyways, did you have any questions about how the auction was going to go? I guess since I'm not personally bidding on anything, I'm st still just here. Okay. Like I said earlier about um, giving bare information, it does look like your compatriots have behaved a lot better than we expected and we do appreciate that for the most part um it's better than i expected too <laughs> <laughs> she kind of chuckles <laughs> she, she's fair um but just as a reminder there is more money in it for you if you do tell barrett the name before you tell john should you find it out I have an auction to oversee, ma'am, and it seems like my husband is coming back. Have a good trip. Or, it's not really a trip. Have a good auction. <laughs> um, I'm going to go and talk to... I guess he's back. No, nah, you can go talk to somebody before he gets back. Who hasn't been talked to? Oh, the right. Glowy that people. would be the glowy people. So quiet okay. over here whose name is not showing up for some reason, because nobody wants to do what I tell them to. There we go. Quiet over here is the private collector. Um, she's Kenku. No one's quite sure where she came from. Um, she also has kind of like the local coloring instead of the typical... Uh, like Raven and Crow that Mainlander see. So she's got a bit of that colorful tropical magpie coloring going on. And then Thalinar down here, nobody's directly talked to. That is the husband of Tool who was having an argument with his wife. Well, he looks grumpy. <laughs> so I'm going to go over here. Let's and I'm going to... The first thing I'm going to do is give a compliment about how gorgeous her feathers are. Uh, I did right. not mean to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lindsay, I don't you know. had a question oh, for me. Sebastian sat on my keyboard. Oh, the butt face. Sebastian is trying to get me to kill people. <laughs> I looked it up, Lindsay. Oh, all right, cool. I wasn't sure what Cat you needed. Oh, it's okay. Um, cats, cats, grave murder. We do that. All right. So quiet. Um, a lot of Kenku, when you talk to them, kind of have like disjointed voices, this, that, and the other. Quiet has a very rareness to her voice that it all sounds like the same person talking. It's still a little disjointed. It's still a little bit copy paste that the Kenku get, um, but it does not seem to be coming from multiple sources. It's just one source. It's very unaccented, and it's very unplaceable, intentionally so. And that, in and of itself, throws up red flags. 
It just means she spent a lot of time around specific people to learn. Quite possibly. So she goes, ah, yes, thank you for the compliment. Um, I love your dress. Ah, oh, thank you. It was a gift from a very dear friend. Yeah, those are technically... The, mm, those are... Uh, pardon. Those are good gifts to get. What kind of things are you hoping to get today? Oh, uh, Lady Never Tells. I work for a private collector who enjoys their anonymity. I don't really want to have more competition. I see you are sitting with Bellis. I am. And I, Bellis right is here. actually said in a different voice. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not actually here to buy anything at all. I'm just a, a guest, a, f a friend. Mm, well, do enjoy the festivities. I uh, obviously can't tell you why I'm buying things, but perhaps I will see you again and we will find common ground then. I look forward to it. Uh, and I'm going to guess, I guess I'll... I'll walk back here. Um, I think my character has an obsession with feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> They're very pretty. You want that bird boyfriend and the best friend with the pretty plume. All right. So. And... I don't know what to do other than push. And I, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't feel yeah. like my character's pushy. No, you're fine. I don't feel like you are acting out of character, and I don't feel like your character would do much more than that. I just wanted to get you an opportunity if you wanted to ask somebody something. <clears throat> um, but Bellis comes back and hands you your juice and, and gives you a very fond look and then kind of settles in next to you as the auction begins. Does anybody have any last second things they want to do? I'm going to take that as a no. Go ahead and take it away, Lindsay. All right. So allow me as the DM to tell you how this particular thing is going to go. The auctioneer would be explaining to you how an actual auction proceeds. But from our standpoint, basically each round, I'm going to give you a small description of what's on the docket and things and ask if anyone is going to bid. If you're, if nobody's, if nobody from like our group here is bidding, I'm just gonna kind of flash forward it because we have a lot of things to get to, <clears throat> and then there will be uh, a couple breaks here and there for um, what we're going on. And otherwise, as far as auctioning is concerned, I'm not going to speak as quickly as auctioneers do. Also, this is like a fancier auction, so they're kind of okay to go slower. Um, this is the kind of bougie ones, uh, rather than like the freaking Kiko auctioners around here. Um, but what was I going to say? Uh, does anyone have questions on how an auction generally goes on the off chance people are unaware? I have a question. Yes. Is anyone else really disappointed that we don't get to hear Lindsay do an auctioneer voice? A little, to be honest. I don't entirely know if I could do it. Like at some I think point, you could. it just at some point it just turns into me. It is like, a genuine like, skill. <laughs> yeah, it, it, at some point it would just turn into me getting tongue tied and like going like le, 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 at, at which point that's that's not words. <laughs> I cannot word the, like you. Uh, to be fair though, you all have heard me speak very rapidly and passionately about something. I am certain auctioneering is a skill I could learn at some point. It is not one that I currently possess. And also, again, this is like the nice bougie ones where they're just like, <laughs> can I have such like this is an old ass dude with a gavel. That, that is that is the vibe we are looking at here. Nevertheless, I'm disappointed. That is fair. Do we Valid. have paddles that I can put up when I want to bid on something? Yes, as I asked Carissa earlier, you all have uh, paddles with desiccate and dated numbers so that they can, like, determine who's putting their, like, hand up, basically. 
Okay, I'm sorry if we already went over that. No, I, it was an offhanded question I asked to Carissa at the beginning, and we've been talking for like 30-some minutes about what everyone's doing in here. Totally valid to not remember things. Any other questions? What is my number? <laughs> what do you want it to be? 69. I was going to say 37, <laughs> because that's my favorite number, but I, I want it to be 20 because of the 20 gold. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's yeah, fair. Iconic. My voice. All right. Um, as a reminder, uh, both Faraday and Ray have been given basically loaner money so that they can technically bid and win stuff at the auction. But this is money you have to give back, which also means that you have to give back to basically drawn in them whatever you win if you win something. I assume, unless it's because it wouldn't be an invalid purchase. I'm not exactly sure how else that would work. Is that how that was supposed to work, Carissa? Yeah, whatever they buy, they have to give to Jaron. Okay. Damn it. Assuming they don't use their own money. Or what find if other we pull our it. money together and pay them back? Then yeah, you could totally <laughs> yeah, do that. That would be okay. fine. Slay. I'm I'll going... just assume that it'll work out. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. See, you know how to play a bard. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or I can hope that my new uh, fox friend will cover for me. He's a, he's a, she's an Abyssinian cat. She's, she's got two sugar mamas. <laughs> she I did, does. I did oh. not understand that first word, but I'm sorry that she's a cat and not a fox. I was wrong. <laughs> you're, you're okay. To be fair, yeah. then I realized, oh, wait, shit, is she calling Hazel a foxy lady, like, instead? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I mean, that's a valid no, response. No, but that would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Now then. Uh, give me one sec. I'm just poking a little thing. Okay. So, that being said. <clears throat> welcome, ladies and gentlemen, as we open up this evening's auction. Um, he, the auctioneer, pulls out a uh, small placard. With um, an il with an illustration of I think three yes it was three, uh three weapons. It's a uh, frame so that it sits nice on a little um stand they have there. <clears throat> Our first item on the docket is a selection of returning weapons. Uh, as you can see, these are uh. This is the placeholder presentation for the object. Per standard rules, uh, the first, the highest bid shall select the however many they wish at their current bid, and the next highest would be allowed afterwards. Uh, and then I should probably have the start the bidding thing. Um, bidding will start at 200 gold. And then, all right, knowing that, does anyone want to bid? This is a bad time for Ray to remember that he's a kleptomaniac. There's a reason there's a picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is that a no? I'm just going to start walking around was, and delivering it, drinks. It, it was a no. Okay. You know nobody has 200 gold. Well, you yes. technically do have 200 gold. You have 1,000 gold. I have 33 gold. I just checked. Yeah. You have 1,000 gold to play with to make yeah. it look like you're here legitimately. You you and Ray both have fake money. Well, it's placeholder money. But again, oh, man. as a note... <laughs> I would have went double or nothing again again. <laughs> again, as a note, although you also have should have, I don't know if you added the 20 to your list otherwise. Do you know if you added the 20 that you won last time to your current inventory, though? I would love to say that I didn't, but I have no idea. I don't think she did, because I'm looking at other players' amounts, and that doesn't look great. All right, then you at least yeah. then add an extra 20. Oh, team, I'm rich. I'm getting us this boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so that is where your guys' current status are. So now that we have discussed the thing and confirmed 
the quantity of your, I'm going to call it play money for be lack of a better term. Once again, to confirm, is anyone bidding? Nope. nope. <clears throat> cool. All right. <clears throat> then the bidding proceeds. The individuals who bid on this uh, are Colress, the Merfolk Noble, Gavin, the uh, veteran, and uh, Plu actually throws in a, a sort of light bid on that one. And then we also have Terra. Which one is Terathalak? My brain is glitching. That's the Baroness. Ah, yes, Baroness. But the individual who uh, ultimately comes out on top is Falinar, the gentleman down here by Java. Um, and he gets it for 400 apiece, and he is taking the lot. And at one point, uh, what she calls it, as uh, Koki is delivering uh, drinks, she hears Gavin <laughs> talking, uh, like, cursing about how it's like, that is not worth that. Something along those lines. It's like, that is not worth it. And he, like, that, it, so that's probably why it backed out. All right. <clears throat> After that, um, The next round, the auctioneer now pulls out um, actually sort of a small tabletop, uh, like half bust mannequin, and pulls out uh, a a rather look a rather like soft. Uh, uh, wait, this is a oh, hang on, my. What you calls it? Um, pulls out a. I'm trying to remember what this item looks like. Oh, just a. Uh, I sorry. I saw seasons and I got confused. Um, pulls out a rather luxurious looking cloak, uh, in a sort of soft velvet gray. Um, <clears throat> places it upon the mannequin so that it flows nicely over the edges of the table here. Uh, the. Or actually, I'm going to say Nabora did that because that's why she's here. Because I glitched. So, uh, and then, yeah, Nabora is actually the one who's like handling the items as uh, the auctioneer is going. Um, so she pulls this out. Auctioneer goes, And now, next up on our list is this season's cloak of stealth. Uh, the, uh, uh sorry. My brain. <laughs> Uh, this is, of course, the actual article and may be uh, taken uh, after purchase this evening. Others will need to be arranged ra rather than the first lot, which would was required to be organized after the fact. And let me scroll over to see what we've got the list here. Thank you. Um, and the starting bid on this will be 100 gold. And now I ask, does anyone wish to bid on this object? Me! I kind of figured. All right, are you opening the bid at 100? Oh, I'm opening the bid at 150. All righty, you have... It's like, 150. And he sort of notes at you. It's like, I have 150. Do I have... Uh, I'm trying to see here. <clears throat> uh... Shoot, I'm seeing all of the... N oh, um... Wait, wait. Am I... Hang on. I, I feel like I'm looking at the... I'm looking at a chart, and I'm missing things. Uh... One moment. All right, you have opened at 150. Uh, next up is uh, Hazel. Oh, 
is actually going to raise her paddle and go for uh, 200. Do you wish to respond to that? 205. Okay. Uh, to that, then, um, actually, N- uh, Nabora, who surprisingly also has a paddle, uh, you see, kind of pulls it out to say, uh, 210, I believe is what, because you said, you said 25, right? Yeah. Okay. Pulls out to say 210. 215. Okay. Um, then Plu actually seemingly in, uh, uh, seemingly in response to you outbidding Hazel, uh, goes up to 225. 235. All right. Uh, you said sorry. Sorry, my brain. I'm trying. Like again, there is a chart. My brain is trying to process letters and numbers and things. Um, two thirty-five. Uh, Nabora is gonna go up and say two forty. I give her such a withering look. Two fifty. Two fifty. All right. Uh. From in front of you, you hear quiet, say, 255. And this is the moment that Ray was like, why the fuck am I here? Not stealing. To get this dope-ass cloak. I could just steal it. (laughs) That's an option for after the fact. This is a physical object here. If you wanted to be a sneaky bitch after the fact, that's a thing. And you could wear it and totally get away with it because no one would see you. (laughs) Stealth, not invisibility. But it's a good (laughs) self-bonus. Anyway, quiet is at 255. By the way, assume this is going a lot quicker. This is me just asking, like, because I assume Ray and everyone would act inappropriate timing. But is Ray bidding again? No. All right. Uh, Nabora actually, like, stares very poignantly at quiet and bids 300. <clears throat> At which point, uh, no one else bids against her, and Nabora gets the cloak. Do we all, like, clap in, like, small, like, silent clapping? Yes. Actually, yes. That's not canon. Yes. I, Yay! It is- <laughs> I, I believe, yes, yeah, small golf claps are acceptable at the end of each one, at which point the the auctioneer, like, after a certain time, does this very, like, the, the little shushing motion with the hands. It's like, all right, all right, settle down, even though it's literally just quiet golf clapping. <laughs> Ray is right. powder. Uh, poor Ray. All right. All right. Next up, we have <clears throat> uh, Nabora. uh, tucks the cloak away underneath the desk and pulls out a rather nice, I don't know what the word is for it other than jewelry case, like those little flat things with the glass tops where it's like the nice Just jewelry case. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like case. a jewelry box or something. What? Or like a jewelry box. I've also heard it called a jewelry box. I mean, yeah, I don't basically think just, yeah, just just one of the flat display ones so that you can see it. And again, it's propped up on the little stand so that it is presenting. And you have uh, these three pieces. You have these three uh, pieces of jewelry. They are three different necklaces of various cuts and designs, um, with these very brilliantly red gemstones at the center of them. <clears throat> and I I gasp and whisper, "Those would look so good on quiet." <laughs> I um what what I was gonna... <laughs> Bella 
just looks at you and goes, Oh my god, yes they would. <laughs> and now you're both conspiratorially looking at Quiet over your shoulder, <laughs> imagining garnets on her. Katie, you were saying something. I'm going to nudge my buddy and be like, those are pretty cute. You were looking for jewelry, right? Carissa, I believe she is speaking to Plue. And that I know, is I'm a... sorry, I'm blowing my nose. Give me a second. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, that was the worst muted. timing ever. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Plu kind of looks at you and gets, like, a very predatorial grin and goes, you know exactly what I'm thinking. All right. <clears throat> and, uh, the auctioneer now prints, presents, like, here we have three lovely samples of jewelry made with Norvish garnets, similar to the returning weapons. The top bid will select the first and may choose however many and the rest may go in order of bid we shall start the bidding at uh we shall start the bidding at 50 gold pieces does anyone wish to bid on the fancy ass jewelry that is a sounds like now all right. I keep, I keep I keep staring at quiet, like <laughs> like, not, like going like bye, like, bid. <laughs> uh, quiet, quiet kind of looks. Um, have you ever seen like a bird fluff up when they really want to be pet? Yes, yes. <laughs> they're doing that. Like they're kind of like it's not quite an embarrassed kind of like sinking into themselves. It's probably the bird version of like a blush. Okay. <laughs> um I just realized one other person that is supposed to be in this room is not physically in this room. Uh, oh, who's not here? Uh Bunny is not here. Unless uh -huh. I am blind. Oh, thank you are. My beloved sister. <laughs> <laughs> She's supposed to be here. She has been here the whole time. I just didn't All get right. a freaking. I just didn't realize go. she was there, not there until just now when I realized. Wait a moment. <laughs> okay. She's I do also tool. think she'd look lovely in the jewelry. I think mm. it would be nice for her. Well, gee, she the reason would. the reason I mentioned it is because she's listed as one of the bidders for it, and therefore I realized. <laughs> wait, shit, she's not here. She All deserves right. it. She deserves something nice. All right. Um. So, in that case, the bidding goes on. The individuals who engaged in this bid were Bunny, our mysterious mainlander. We have uh, Cor Corliss. Sorry, my brain was trying to say Corliss, but that's I think I screwed up the words on that one. Anyway. Um, Thalinar, surprisingly. It seemed like he threw in sort of a bid offhandedly, but Plue was determined as all shit and she got the pick of the litter for herself uh oh no nope, ignore it okay uh she got herself the pick of the litter at the impressive 250 gold pieces at which point uh she goes up to the case uh to select one with a very daintily cut heart-shaped garnet necklace uh, to bring it back, uh, at which point she starts walking back, um, as that's the only one. After which, uh, Colress, who had the second highest bid, goes up and gets one. And then Bunny actually get, takes the third. And as those two are up and selecting their pieces, Plu, Faraday, you see Plu kind of lean over and, uh, clasp the necklace around Hazel's neck. And, uh, Carissa, I know that it's, these are the ones you are usually running, but I wanted to maybe say some sort of, like, per nuzzle thing and from Plu. Go ahead. Yes, and Plu gives uh, her uh, lady friend a little per nuzzle of affection. And I assume Hazel would also give a little kiss <clears throat> back, and then 
Plue goes to sit down. All right. And now, <clears throat> as I said, we are having intermittent breaks. We have reached the thir first break, and we finally cut over to see what the fuck Benny has been up to this <laughs> whole ass time. Yeah, right. Benny! Oh, there I am! I'm in a small room! Because you were been gone for a long time, so we needed to have some time left, so that's why we waited until now. So, assume that this okay, is no, right you. after your interaction, and then stuff will happen as it goes. Yeah, right. And, and I will now back out, because this is a you and a Barrett situation. Oh, good. Good for me. Good for me. <laughs> Love that for me. All right. So, after Barrett finds you in the hall and tells you that you both need to have a talk, um, he leads you down back through the alleys of the people who make, you know, the food and all of that, down some yeah. smaller set of stairs than the guests ever get to see. Into a room, into a corner, where a chair is already waiting for you, and oh, he sits in one that. across from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he goes, so, um, I see that you have a connection with one of our other auctioneers. You're just full of those, aren't you? You mean auction guest? Auction guest? I understood, don't worry. And Benny hey. is going to say nothing. He's not selling out his sister, fuck you. <laughs> And he's like, I find it mildly concerning um, that someone who was hired by the guild to look into my business uh, has connections with someone who's not from the Isles. I'm, again, I am not saying anything because I am not selling out my sister. I would never do that. I love my sister. Fuck you. So, Barrett slowly stands up from his chair. And up until this point, he didn't really seem super threatening, right? Yeah. yeah. He kind of he kind of had, like, the same vibes as, like, a boss who caught you, like, stealing french fries. <laughs> For sure. More than, like, somebody who's pissed. But he doesn't seem to very much enjoy the quiet that you're keeping. Mm -hmm. Benny is not a small man. Um, no, he's a big boy. Barrett is a huge man. Yeah. And with Benny sitting down, Barrett is just imposing. And he takes a couple steps forward closer to Benny. Mm -hmm. And he goes, You know, I can respect somebody with the ability to keep their mouth shut. And he reaches forward and no. slowly pulls down your mask. No, I know. Okay. And he goes, I just can't tolerate nothing being told to me at this point. I am sure you understand. Oh, I could, get, <laughs> I could get Benny killed, but I'm not gonna do it. Because <laughs> no one knows where I am. That would get me killed. Were okay. you about to shock and grasp or otherwise assault this bitch? Okay, I was looking at shock and grasp, but then I was like, wait, if he <laughs> cover my mouth, I can also bite him with my huge fucking mouth. Um, that is a thing you no. could do. You could do that. I could, I would get killed. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. All right, okay. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give a bitch <clears throat> a second. Give a bitch a second. No Take worries. Down. Who can I spell out? No! <laughs> <laughs> Who can I pretend to know that's not my beloved sister? I'm not from the Isles. You can, you can, uh. No, not one of the party. I'm thinking of, <laughs> uh, people who are just people at the auction. Oh, fuck me. Not my beloved sister. Oh. I know, and that's not a stat that I'm good at. Motherfucker. <laughs> <sighs> oh no. Do I have a bite attack actually? Just like not because I'm not because I'm gonna do it, but I don't think I, I do um, have a bite attack. I, right? I probably just have you do yes, you do. 
I yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure you, you took that feature when you did the, the, the buying yeah. thing. It should be there. It is. Would that just be unarmed combat, though, if not? It's an actual fee for his multi-classing, or multi-racial background. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, for someone not Benny. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would just have you, like, roll an arm strike. Truly okay. noted. Oh, yeah, you're a cat. Okay, I'm I mean, going... yeah, but you also have claws as a cat. <laughs> mm. That's true. That's true. I have a negative one to Chaw, which means I have a negative one to <laughs> so... Deception. So if, so if Nelson, Nelson ever wanted, wanted to, to bite, bite you, you, you would, would just tell him, him hey, hey now, you, you have claws. <laughs> I'm just saying that a parent, I'm not, the thing is, is I'm just saying the Tabaxi do not inherently have, I think, I, at least I don't think they do, unless they have an ability, like, I'm forgetting how numbers work, but I'm just saying I don't think they have a mechanical bonus to chomping, as opposed to, I know you guys have a personal mechanical bonus <laughs> to clawing. Mind you, you are a cat-like race, not specifically cat. Okay. So what's Benny doing? Okay, okay, okay. Did you shut the door behind him? So, you, you can kind of see <laughs> where your character is. Are you talking to, like, where you're at right now? Yeah. Yeah, I can't get past him. Okay, great. So, yeah, there's two guards kind of in the other way. He's kind of half blocking the stairs up, but to Benny's, we're just going to say left, which would be, like, north on the map. Mm hmm um, there is a latch in the floor. You are not tied down. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, <clears throat> shit. Fuck it. Fuck it. No, there's no. There's no. It's stupid. I'll die. I'll get killed. Fine. I'm lying. I'm lying to him. <laughs> I mean, you also kind of had that built-in lie. Your sister pretty much can, was trying to convince the fact that uh, she wanted to, like, make out with you and shit. But also, if they catch my sister, then they'll know that my sister, who she is, because then they could... They could that is fair. That's my beloved sister. No way. I'd rather right. die. Um, my apologies. Fine. I have decided to select Hazelin Lapis as my lie. <laughs> Okay. What are you lying? I... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm gonna say fine. What do you want to know? Barrett seems to take you finally saying something as enough of a reason to quit looming. The tension oh, that you face. didn't <laughs> quite realize that had started mm -hmm. to form in his body while you were quiet kind of eases out his giant shoulders you know relax just a titch and he sits back down in his seat kind of pulling his suit jacket correctly he's just a little bit fancier than you've seen him passing before hmm. probably because the auction is about to start sure if not fully ongoing at this point point. and he goes i respect people who are willing to know where their loyalties lie. So if you can give me information about people on this boat that you feel like I don't have and you don't lie to me, <laughs> I will let the fact go about whatever you're trying to hide about your relationship with Ms. Bunny. Fucking hell. Okay, fine. All right. Also, can I perceive on the latch and the floor, does it look locked? Does it look like a place I could fit my big old body into? <laughs> um, let's see. Mother. You're like the most responsible one of all of us, and you got caught. I know. He was being I suspicious. Bet. I was being a little sus, yeah. No, a little I'm sus. suspicious. Don't I'm going to shoot myself in the head. <laughs> The first well, bad roll of the night. Yeah, I literally said to Gina when you guys were like, oh, everyone's rolling so well. I was like, it's because I haven't rolled yet. <laughs> hey, you did beat a 10, though. I did. Woohoo. So it wasn't a fumble. Um, It's kind of a little dim in that back corner. Yeah. You were being around beforehand. You know that the locks on the latches aren't really locks. They're just 
legitimately simple latches. Mm -hmm. Um, And anytime people have wanted people not to get in and out of those doors, they've just straight up put boxes on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while you think it's latched, it's not like you're going to have to pick a lock to get through it. It's not like I'm going to have to block. Okay. Because if I shock and grasp him, he has no reaction, and I could go down there, and but there's no guarantee that I'll be able to bounce. Okay, no, fuck it. Fine. We're on a boat also. I know. Oh, I'm a, I'm half mer True. Person. Like, I can swim. Yeah, if you can get to, like, a window to jump out, you can just... Then I could leave. leave. Um, oh, my God. So that's my... That's in my back pocket. Okay. What did I find out when I was eavesdropping? on those people in their room because I might I will sell that out for real for sure so you did hear Hazelin and Tethelak yeah Tethelak uh talking about their contracts and a couple other things let me look at the list of what you actually heard yeah it's somewhere in the chat let me find it see I'll offer that I don't care this is just work they go there they are all right you didn't hear much from them unfortunately it doesn't look like because that was the one that you failed the roll on yeah if i recall correctly you did see them putting a book back on a shelf though yeah they were actually using the items in their room and there seemed to be a lot of paperwork in there the other thing you did notice was um thalinar and tool having an argument in their bedroom Mm -hmm. And uh, Tool making it very well known that she does not like Barrett. Yes, I think I'm going to give that up. I think I'm going to say that. Uh, gosh, I can't remember their names. I have the doctor and the inheritor right here. Let me pull them up. Let you can just call him the doctor and the inheritor. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, you're going to uh, either lose some of your business or your business is going to be compromised by a shaky connection with the doctor. Barrett kind of leans back in his chair and goes, when did you overhear this? On a delivery. Hmm. Do you know, did you hear it from her? I did. They were arguing. Do you know who she was arguing with? The inheritor. I would say their name, but I don't. Yeah, I don't. you're fine. You can. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I'll just yeah. insert name here. Yes, insert name. Ah. And he kind of sits back for a second and he kind of watches Benny's face and seems satisfied. Mm. And he goes, Good enough. I've known for a while that Tool was not exactly happy with the way I run my business, but having confirmation of that, as well as confirmation that her husband is aware of it and has not told me. He kind of looks at Benny for a couple of seconds, and he uh, looks behind him, waves at one of the guards. He goes, search the room. And off the guard goes, leaving only one in Barrett. And so he goes, all right. I'm going. And do not take this for me actually believing this is fact. Give you the benefit of the doubt that you are A person who is working for a legitimate corporation and therefore will act in legitimate ways. And I'll end this conversation here. Through those doors, and he stands up rather quickly, and his entire demeanor shifts after that. He goes from kind of like this imposing, quiet, looming man to almost like this jovial big brother looking character. And he points to the doors past the, uh, the casks of beer that you can barely see in the dim light. And he goes over through the doors past the casks is actually the back end of the auction. 
Um, I would suggest not going through the auction as I do not believe Rum gave you any directions to be there. You can take these stairs straight back up to the kitchen and continue the rest of your shift. Um, do not seek employment in any of my business again. <laughs> I should have fucking shot and grasped him. God damn this guy. I mean, hey, Benny knows how to take an L. He's going to bounce. He will go back to work. All right. Have a good night, gentlemen. Do I still have a uh, cryptogram charged? You do uh, not. Fuck me. Okay, then I need to... Uh, is there any way that I can safely get to my sister and warn her that she's been fucking rumbled? Um, she's at, Well, he just said the auction was the going auction. on, and you knew that she was going to the auction, so you could... Mm-hmm. But Bear has already left. You could hypothetically try to go to the auction if you wanted. I, I don't even want to be there to be there. I want to go to tell her to, like, leave. So the easiest way you could probably get in there that Benny would probably know at this point would be to try to get food to get served down there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like okay. bringing a tray of hors d'oeuvres. Come get a drink! Whatever and I, I served her earlier... Her. Yeah, whatever I served her earlier, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go make some. Say say that it was a, a special request. I need to get straight up the message cantrip. Cryptogram ain't cutting it, man. All right, I'll take you back up to the kitchen, and we'll start the next rounds of the auction. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I should have just shot and grasped that guy and run. Motherfucker. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. Uh. Real quick, because technically this is a little uh, break, but you guys have been pretty apt about telling me if there's anything you guys had been wanting to do um, between rounds. Oh, um, one sec. I have a question. I must ask the Carissa. Yo. I will rub my three brain cells together to give you an answer. Alrighty. So, uh, as this, uh, what you calls it. <clears throat> uh, next round of the auction is about to take off. You do see one person sort of like run. Uh, uh, would you say he'd be running in like late, or is he arriving exactly when he intended to? Uh, he is fast paced walking. He probably wanted to be here a little bit sooner. Fair. Uh, you see another gentleman who I think Koki ran across briefly. Uh, axed in Cutstone, the halfling who is in charge of the boat. This boat is the boat man, as it were. All is right. he the one that was in the the front of the boat at one point when I went out there? Yes. Okay. I believe you had uh, one brief conversation with him, but... Yes. <clears throat> I don't remember what it was about, but I remember. All right. Moving on. Boop. All right. Next, we have uh, Numamora once again pulls out. This plaque is uh, actually just sort of a. Oh, sorry. Does Koki want to be doing things as this oh. is happening? She's been gonna... wandering around getting drinks uh-huh. while you've been doing stuff. Just That's fine. I was not paying attention. All that jazz. I just wanted to make certain there wasn't, like, I wasn't about to talk over you or anything, was all. Carry on. All right. So. <clears throat> uh, as Navora is pulling out again another frame in this case it is a uh, just sort of a, a general like a a silhouette illustration of a red stag very simple but like framed please on it our auctioneer turns to this it's like up next on our block is information on various potential hunting locations for the famed Red Forest Stag. We shall start the bidding at... 
50 gold pieces. Does anyone wish to bid on this item? That is a no. Nope. Ignore it. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Did you finish? What? Oh, you said Continue. you're fine. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so that is a new. Um, during this auction, uh, four people, uh, uh, first off, at the declaration of the item up for auction, Rum seems very relieved, as though it's like, oh, thank God I didn't miss it. Uh, and, yep, just want to double check. During this bid, uh, Ezekiel, the gentleman who none of you know, uh, <laughs> and, and nudge nudge. Yes. Uh, Nabora, Thalinar, and obviously Rum. And specifically, Rum is very fierce on this one, and he gets it for uh, 350. So, good for him. All right, next. All right. Uh, this one again. <clears throat> so now, Nabora pulls out a a large. Uh, well, it's actually not even particularly large because I just remembered uh, who Made this dress belonged to. Yes, it belonged to a halfling. So it is uh, actually the sort of dress box that in uh, our IRL life, you would associate more with like a child's dress size box, um, and places it on the stand, removes the lid, and you see this immaculate white dress with these uh, beads stoned into it in delicate flowing patterns. <clears throat> And you see Hazel's eyes light the fuck up, Faraday. Right. I smirk and whisper, mine's prettier. <laughs> Bellis nods emphatically. <laughs> He's like, the color is always better than the white. All right. And our auctioneer gestures to the parcel. And now we have the famous dress of, I forget if she was an opera singer or just a performer of some. I knew she was a singer. I think we had though. I of, think she's just a singer. Yes, of the famous singer Melody Rowick. And we shall start the bidding at one thousand gold pieces. Does anyone wish to bid on the dress of Melody Rowick? Or does anyone have anything else? I didn't know if Faraday had a reaction or anything, but... This right. is the dress the other person wanted, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to turn to her and say that she would look really pretty in it, if she wants to wear it. Hazel goes, thank you, Faraday. And then, like, leans over you to kind of give Plue a pointed look. And Plue looks at the box, looks at uh, Hazel, looks back at the box, and just slowly raises an eyebrow. As a reminder, Hazel is, you don't actually know what uh, species she is, but she is of medium size, and I don't know if it, this is the words we used to describe her before, but in my head, my brain was always using the word voluptuous. She's a very curvy woman. Yes. Oh, so she's pretty? She's very pretty. She is... Is a stacked girlfriend now? <laughs> she's... she's... <laughs> Hazel is literally a starlet. She is known for being drop dead gorgeous. So you mean one of my girlfriends is pretty and the other one is loaded? I'm killing it, team. <laughs> Honestly, Faraday did win. Faraday did win really hard. Right. <laughs> well, it's time to retire Farida as a character. She cannot top this. <laughs> she just goes off with them forever and I have to go create a new bard. <laughs> this time actually characters? inspires people. <laughs> We'll just yank somebody from Horns and Halberders for you. Problem solved. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so assuming no one is bidding on this here dress, uh, we shall wrap this up real quickly. Um, so, Java, you actually see that uh, despite his comments, Bellis does actually bid on this dress. Uh, 
Then we also have. Uh, but oh, I'm yeah. gonna make it. I am gonna make a snarky comment. Isn't Are that a thinking? little short for her? <laughs> Bellis looks at you and grins and goes, "Not all things are for wearing, even if they look like it." I right. just raised my eyebrow. <laughs> he kind of shrugs. He's like, "I'll explain later, perhaps." Okay, and then also, uh, who bids on this one is Dithian, which I think is the yeah, that's the librarian fella. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the only other one bidding on this is Hazel, but apparently, uh, I what you calls it, um, Dithian like Bellis is, is bidding in there. Uh, Dithian is. Also, like, pretty entries. Hazel, Hazel is, like, a fucking fire in this shit. And at some point, she just straight up stands up and declares to uh, de- declares 3,300 gold pieces for this dress. And Dithin just is, like, looking across the room at this woman, completely, star- like, struck. And uh, she wins with that impressive final bid. Bellis just laughs. <clears throat> All right. And uh, here's where I get a call from my family oh. and I need to go to the to my room to answer it. I have to go to bed. <laughs> okay. Well, so okay. yeah, no, it is nine. All right. And we can uh <laughs> it's okay. We can end it. Um and we will pick back up at six. I'm sorry, I was really well, hoping to get hold on. Oh yeah. Do you want to just cut? I think that was a question to uh, you, Crystal. No, no, no. I mean, you. Do you just want to cut? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying we just cut now and then pick back up at... Or do you mean, like, cut the rest of the auction off? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean we... But the boat! She did kind of want to try and bid on the boat. It's okay. I knew you weren't going to give it to me. (laughs) (laughs) Let's do this slightly out of character. This is taking a lot longer than we were expecting. Quick vote. Wrap up auction. Continue auction. As in like Wrap next up. session. Yes, this will be for next session. I would give you like three lines to let you guys know what you're preparing for next session if we chose to wrap up the auction. So in general chat, please tell me whether you would prefer to continue auction or a wrap up auction. Uh, are you making like a voting thing or what are we doing? No, nope, I just chat. like just put it in the general chat. Just type something. <laughs> Stella and I in the same boat. All right. The only one people. Have... I was just going to say, the only one who hasn't voted is Agena, but either way, it seems as though uh, the continue option has been selected. So, we can take uh, care of that. My uh, my Discord went down on my phone while I was trying to answer, but I was also going with continue auction. Okay. All right. That's cool. The auction is fun. Okay. As long as everybody's having fun, I am A-OK continue. Yeah, I think the auction's really cool. Yeah, We just wanted to make certain we weren't, like, dragging it out. Also, Benny has to come in uh, at yeah, some point he with hors d'oeuvres. He does. I have All a right. special order for an important client. Indeed. All right. So in that case, uh, we will wrap up there. Um, I will highlight this so I know which one we were on. And then we will continue this all next time. Uh, give me one moment here because I have to stop the recording. Uh, uh, what you call it. And thus concludes another session of the Dead Sea God.